Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the July 2021 incident involving a group called Rise of the Moors? Another question here would be, who are the Moorish sovereign citizens? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. I've also launched my podcast, Bella Grande Media. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. Me and my co-host have recorded several episodes that are available at the time making this video, including Gary Ridgway, Ronnie O'Neill, Betty Broderick, and Scott Peterson. Those are included in the Murder Part series. There's also an Alien Lizard Humanoid series, and so far we have one video there, Bhagwan Rajneesh. But we're working on more videos every week, so we plan on contributing to that fairly often. Again, I'll put the link to that in the description. So moving back to the narrative, I will start with reviewing this group, Rise of the Moors, then I'll talk more about Moorish sovereign citizens in general. On July 3, 2021, at about 1.30 a.m., the Massachusetts State Police noticed two cars on the shoulder of Interstate 95 in Wakefield, Massachusetts. They stopped to assist. The police would discover men carrying firearms and wearing military-style clothing refueling their vehicles. The police asked them to produce registrations for the firearms, which are evidently required in Massachusetts. The men said they did not have licenses for the weapons, and they did not recognize state laws. The police called for backup. Some of the men ran into the woods. A standoff began. It lasted about nine hours, causing disruption to travel and to local residents. The standoff concluded with 11 arrests. The suspects who could be identified ranged in age from 40 all the way down to 17. Two suspects would not identify themselves. Many of the members caused a scene in court, refusing an attorney, saying they would not submit to U.S. law. Apparently, the judge wasn't too amused, as some were ordered held without bail because they were believed to be dangerous. The group has been identified as Rise of the Moors. It has been reported this group is based in Rhode Island, where they claimed an abandoned residence. They are Moorish sovereign citizens. The group claims to be their own sovereign nation. The group has an online presence. At the time of the incident, they had about 5,000 followers on Instagram, 1,000 on Facebook, and 17,000 on YouTube. The group released a video on YouTube the day of the incident. It was a live stream. One of the unidentified group members said the group was not anti-government, not anti-police, not sovereign citizens, and not black identity extremists. So he was offering a lot of tips on what they are not. He didn't really talk too much about what they were. It's interesting he said they weren't sovereign citizens because the term Moorish sovereign citizens would suggest otherwise. The term sovereign citizens is right in the name. This brings me to the next question. Who are Moorish sovereign citizens? Are they the same thing as regular sovereign citizens? Here I'm talking about Moorish sovereigns in general, not about rise of the Moors. It's not clear how strictly this group follows the general tenets of Moorish sovereign citizens. The beliefs and origin of Moorish sovereign citizens is a bit confusing. I'm not sure that everybody in these groups really understands what they believe or why they believe it. They use a lot of bizarre language in their descriptions, a lot of quotes from various sources just kind of merged together without really being organized to lead to some type of point. Here's a general background on Moorish sovereign citizens. This group is a version of sovereign citizens that emerged in the early 1990s when people started to combine sovereign citizen thinking with some of the beliefs of the Moorish science temple. Not all Moorish sovereign citizens believe themselves to be connected to sovereign citizens, again, even though there's a real similarity there with the name. In 2011, the Moorish science temple issued a statement condemning sovereign citizen practices. More sovereign citizens promote an anti-government message. They believe they are part of a sovereign nation. The Moorish part comes from their false belief that a treaty was signed in 1787 between the United States and Morocco, which grants immunity to Morocco from any United States laws. More sovereigns believe they are immune from laws at every level, federal, state, and local. 
This is their justification for refusing to purchase vehicle insurance, register vehicles, and pay taxes. They also use it to justify committing fraud. They have been known to defraud banks as well as selling falsified documents. This is really how they make a living. They sell a variety of fake legal documents and other items, including insurance forms, money orders, cashier's checks, license plates, passports, and other documents. Their strategy of avoiding taxes means they keep all the money they obtained through their criminal enterprise. Some of their fraud is based on what they call redemption doctrine, which is their belief that they can incorporate themselves. This is a belief they share with other sovereign citizens. Here's how this works. They believe that a trust account or bond has been established for every citizen in the United States. The birth certificate is proof of this account. It must be on the back of the birth certificate or something, I don't know. I guess they just thought to turn it over when no one else looked at the back. Each bond was initially funded with up to $20 million. The money in each account is traded on some type of international bond exchange. Members believe they can separate from the government and claim this money. This is referred to as redemption. In essence, they believe the money is owed to them. It is a birthright, hence the emphasis on the birth certificate. As far as identification, more sovereigns often refer to themselves by using the words bay or L, like B-E-Y and E-L. They sometimes display a red banner with a five-pointed green star. More sovereigns are often in small groups. They don't have any unified leadership. Most of the groups contain no more than 15 or 20 followers. There are probably somewhere about three or 4,000 sovereigns in total, but accurate information about their numbers is not available. More sovereigns have been known to affiliate with other groups, including criminal organizations like street gangs. So this brings me to the next question. Are more sovereigns dangerous? Most more sovereigns tend to gravitate toward fraud, as I mentioned, but there have been some incidents involving violence. Their unlawful behavior has led to many clashes with law enforcement. More sovereign citizens have been known to wear military-style uniforms. They refuse to identify themselves at traffic stops. They sometimes drive vehicles that have been modified to look like police cars, like with a light bar and police insignia. In 2015, a man named Deontay Lanier was charged with first-degree murder. He declared himself a Moorish national and said the judge had no authority over him. In 2016, Gavin Eugene Long, who was part of a Moorish sovereign group, killed three police officers before being shot and killed by police. In 2017, a Moorish sovereign named Markeith Lloyd killed his pregnant girlfriend, shot a police officer, and ran over another one. Also in 2017, a man named Marcel Walton was convicted of filing $3.2 million worth of fraudulent tax returns. He filed tax returns for 17 other people, telling them that they were entitled to remuneration from the government for its use of Moorish lands. Walton identified himself as a grand sheik of a Moorish temple in Chicago, not just a regular sheik. Walton received six years in federal prison, where people are more concerned with shanks than sheiks. What type of mental health and personality factors may be at work with Moorish sovereign citizens? It's important to note for any particular Moorish sovereign, nothing may be going on. Let's look at some of the symptoms that appear to be overrepresented in sovereign citizens in general. Moorish sovereigns are, of course, part of this group. Sovereign citizens often engage in what they call paper terrorism. They file unnecessarily lengthy legal documents containing bizarre terminology. Their thinking sometimes appears to be disorganized and consistent with bizarre writing and speaking. Members believe that special terms will help them escape consequences of their behavior when interacting with law enforcement and the courts, like common law, chargeback notice, accepted for value, traveling in a private capacity, where is your oath of office, and who is the victim. It's almost like they believe these words have some type of magical ability like police officers and judges, are robots and just have to know the passcode to get them to leave you alone. I wonder if they ever tried saying, Klaatu Barata Nikto. It's a line from an old movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, that prevents a robot named Gort from being violent. Sovereign citizens tend to be paranoid, believing the government is out to get them. They believe that they have a special ability to see the truth that other people cannot comprehend. 
they are amazing because they realize the government owes them all this money and they're not subject to the law. They tend to believe in a number of conspiracy theories like flat earth, anti-vaccination, and the elite lizard people. I think this sovereign citizen thinking is really like a very empowering conspiracy theory. Most conspiracy theories have its adherents being afraid and avoiding danger. This one is like an aggressive version where they go on the offensive. They're looking to get people angry at them. Sovereign citizens tend to lack insight. They believe their behavior is normal. Their beliefs are egocentric, instead of being disturbed by them, as is the case with egodystonic beliefs. With all these symptoms in mind, cluster A personality pathology is a possibility for some of the members, like features of paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders. Psychosis is another possibility, like hallucinations and delusions. Some of their beliefs really do seem to be separated from reality. Another possibility is personality pathology. They may have features of antisocial personality disorder, which is a cluster B personality disorder, Narcissistic personality disorder is another disorder in that same cluster. Many members also have characteristics of this disorder, like arrogance, a sense of entitlement, and fantasies of wealth and power. As far as a potential personality profile, we see that they are high and openness to experience. They're certainly creative. They have incredible imaginations. We see low conscientiousness, high extroversion. They are outgoing, assertive, and talkative. Low agreeableness, they are distrusting, antagonistic, and they are certainly not modest. They believe that they have the authority of an entire country. Some delusions feature a belief that a person is a king or queen. Sovereign citizens take this to a whole new level. They don't just rule the country, they are the country. As far as the last trait, neuroticism, they tend to be fairly angry, but it's not clear if they're really vulnerable, depressed, or anxious. So overall, maybe somewhere near mid-range. My final thoughts on this, even though more sovereign citizens can be dangerous, I think their main goal is simply to cheat people and the government out of money. They believe they can live by their own rules. Each person is their own little country. It is a belief system that simply justifies a desire to do whatever they want. It is a way of thinking that prevents them from ever having to face reality or take responsibility for their own behavior. Those are my thoughts on more sovereign citizens. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.